No virus can stop our assured, consistent, and quality education. The Jose Maria College holds true to its mission to provide quality education amidst the ongoing crisis on COVID-19. To ensure that all learners will get the best learning experience, the school has crafted two learning delivery options. Option 1. Online Delivery Students who have a stable connection to the internet shall undergo full online classes via platforms such as the Google Ecosystem, Zoom, and an online learning management system. Online classes shall be held by our competent teachers on a daily basis. All interaction shall be via online as there shall be no face-to-face -face interaction in order to keep you safe during these trying times. Option 2. Self-paced learning. For students who see it as a challenge to secure a stable connection to the internet, the school shall be providing modules and other instructional course packages. Students will work on these learning materials and from time to time may need to send their academic work online or discuss their progress with their teachers via email, chat, or video call on a scheduled time. They may attend online classes when their internet connection is stable enough for them to do so. Education goes on for the Jose Maria College. Your future, our mission. Enroll now. For more details, visit us at www.jmc.edu.ph. Hi, J. Marian! Maayong udto sa inyong tanan. And I am Mary J. B. Dominayas, your SSG president this year. And welcome, welcome, welcome to our live. And I am so excited. And hi sa tanan, dira. Oh, I'm so glad that we're live right now. And, and today we'll be talking about the hurdles and political issues that we're facing despite the pandemic. And for the flow, we have our five questions for the small talk and an intermission song number for our campus singer and for the one question for the big talk. And to better understand this talk show, we'll talk with my fellow officer and some of my guests for today. And we have Troy. Hi, Troy. Hello, Joy. Hello, Jay Marians. Welcome to another talk show. We will be discussing us. Uh, serious and interesting uh, topic today so i hope that you will stay tuned yes and what do you feel Troy, that this is our first live now? <laughs> <laughs> it feels kind of great joy to discuss another um interesting topics you know and to discuss it with new members which you will be introducing later on yes and i'm gonna welcome uh, our officer, Ms. Kara. Hi, Kar. Hi, Kar. So, so Kara is not here. So, welcome, Irene. Irene. Hi, Irene. Hi, Ate Joy. Hello, Jim Marianne. 
Thank you. So how are you, Irene? So I'm doing well. Thank you for having me again for the third time of this yeah. talk show. Hello to all the Jamarians who are watching right now. And next we have Joanna. Hi, Joanna. Hi, Joanna. Hi, Ate. Hi, Jay Marians. I am Joanna Biden Dasan from Joanna Biden Biden Nickel. And I am happy that I am back here at Jay Marian Talk Show. And I hope you'll keep on tuning in, guys. Yeah, thank you for that wonderful welcome to the Jay Marian, Joanna. And next we have Tracy. Hi, Tracy. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Greetings, Jay Marians. I am Tracy. I'm from grade 11, class Nickel. Nice meeting you all. I'm actually new here and I'm actually very excited to finally, you know, talk to everyone. Hope you all stay yeah. tuned. Yeah, thank you, Tracy, for yes. uh, no, for accepting my offer to become a guest for this third talk show. And I'm so glad that Tracy and Joanna accepted my offer. And next we have Sean. Everyone, especially to our J. Marian viewers, uh, Ate, thank you for inviting me here. So I am Sean Paul B. Amoylin, and I am from Grade 11 Nickel ABM. Yeah, I'm so grateful too that you really accepted the offer of our principal, Mr. Ryan, and really, really happy na ang dami natin ngayon. Yeah, this is my first time to communicate as uh, some new face, new friends. So really, thank you guys. And next, we have Beyonce, my co-classmate last year. Hi, Beyonce. <laughs> Hi, Joy. Hello, Jimarians. How are you, Thank Beyonce? Thank you for being here. Um, yeah. Great. You feel great? What do you feel about this live talk show that we will be going to? What? <laughs> So next we have Carlos. Um, hello, J. Marians. I'm Carlos from Grade Twelve Emerald, and I'm so happy that I'm here. Thanks, thank you, Joy, for inviting me, and it's my first time. Yeah, it's my pleasure to welcome you all, guys. <laughs> and next, if we have we have Kara. So Kara is having a technical problem right now. So maybe later she's gonna come in. So so I'm gonna shout out uh Christian Dave Rica. I know that you're not ano, hindi pa siya natatapos kasi nag-general nag cleaning sila ngay ngayon kasi nga bumaha yung bahay nila kasi nga alam niyo na ulan ng ulan. So shout out to you guys and to my advisor Ma'am Vanessa Tuwanda. So now uh, we have our small talk show that will be going happen. So this is the first question. Are you ready? Ready? Uh, say approve if ready na. Ready na. So here is the question. So what do you think is the most important political issues at the moment? How about you, uh, Troy? Okay. So, what do you think is the most political issue at the moment? Well, Joy, for me, the most important political issue is about concerning the West Philippine Sea, which is being taken by China. And I actually watch a lot of interviews regarding the terrorist thoughts about this political issue. And I've, I, I, I've listened, and the terrorist said he would wage war in China. And uh, for me as a student, that scares me. And the U.S. is really to help us in engaging in China. But for me, Joy, what scares me the most is the thought of we are triggering World War III. And I know this is not going to be just a simple fight between two nations. Many nations will get involved, and I know many nations will not back down until the enemy has been defeated. And joy, we are, we are yet a small country, 
We cannot fight with other nations. We know that. As Filipinos, we know our capabilities. That's what scares me the most, Joy, is the thought of Philippines being the one who is going to be a victim of this powerful nation, Joy. Yeah, I know the threat cannot be avoided, pero we cannot do like some normal people like us just praying, just pray. That we, I can say that we can yes, like, just pray. Out, like, we cannot say that to voice out our points to toward the political uh, government, yes. but only we can do as a normal people and no, normal residency of the Philippines is just pray, pray, and hope na. Yes, we just I know, ask me for her, kasi for me, I want to pick a side like the government na I get it onito kasi gusto ko, gusto ko siya kasi nakuha niya yung gusto ko, yung point niya, kuha ko. For me, I don't want to pick a side like to be a pro or to be anti. Siguro I don't want to up to to join na lang for complications. I, I, for me, for for you Jane Marians, I hope that you can do it pray na lang for that or for our nation for the good and how about you irene so what do you think is the most uh, current issues right now so i would say na i would consider the vaccines a political issue kasi ang vaccines naman ang pagbigay niya is um handled by the government so not on uh, so I'm not attacking the government of course. What I'm saying is that there are problems regarding it. Lalo na yung may mga tao na ayaw magpa-vaccine, though I understand the hesitation dahil naman sa side effects. I there are also issues of those na kumukulang tayo sa vaccine, yung iba expired, yung iba is marami na sanang nagpa-register and then um ano lang hindi nila mabigay because kulang nga sa LGU. So I have, uh, pati naman sa priority, like kung sino talaga ang priority, because I'm not sure kung priority ba ang celebrities, but there are some on the news na marami din sa kanila is nababakunahan na. So all I'm saying is that since vaccines naman talaga, uh, it's relevant because as of now, meron pa rin naman tayong COVID. And at the same time, it's very, kailangan natin siya matugunan because Lahat tayo affected. Lahat tayo makakatanggap ng vaccine, supposedly. And it's, though it's not a cure, it's a big help to our community or to us now, especially na meron pang pandemic. Yeah, yeah. I agree with what have you said. And how about you? Uh, let, me, let me have Carlos. So... I think the most important political issue at the moment is President Duterte's ano, kung sino ba yung isusupport niya in the upcoming presidential elections because malaki ang impact. President Duterte's rating is malaki and just like yung nasa balita and kung sino man ang pipiliin niya is most likely or malaki talaga ang chance na yun ang mananalo and Kung sino ang pipiliin niya, malaki ang ano, ang potential na mananalo talaga and the stake of the country is at his hands. Yun lang dyan. Wow, what a big blow to me. Ha. You have point two. And I just want to share with you, I think the most, for me ha, I think the most important uh, political issue, not just, uh, sorry for the important term, but at the moment is the, yung talagang, no ano yung mga tao ngayon yung death for the COVID-19 vaccine people kept questioning where did the money go where in the fact that our president said that he doesn't have money from it like it was a uh, yung mga ano lang mga tulong-tulong na talagang taxes na na galing sa atin at alam ko na alam din yun na our president uh prohibited a corruption so how about you Kara for you, this is the last ano, question to be answered by Kara. Yes, Joy. I think that one of the most political issue to presence in the world. Philippine Sea. 
our president, I think that our president must stand up himself and speak about this issue because Chinese vessels in the West Philippine Sea still continue to press, right? So thank you for sharing your uh, ideas, Kara. And now we have our second question. Joy. So that was, uh, ano, no? thank you for your sharing your own ano, idea, Kara, for the issues that we've been ano, facing right now. So we have our second question is, so guys, what can you say about people who are spreading and believing fake news about the COVID-19 vaccine? And let me ask Tracy. Okay, so, well, I think, first off, I think it's because most of, most of us sometimes would just like to hear what we want. Even though we know that the reality is distinct from what we want. Um, it's like what we want to hear or know. What we, uh, and some might be desperate to seek information and that would lead them to just believe anything they find. And right now, as we are locked down and stuck in our houses, and social media comes in. So social media is an appealing way to stay in contact with our friends and family, as we all know that. But it can also be a root of misinformation, that is false news, and maybe some bad bits of advices some of it even seriously wrong. Honestly, it is difficult to avoid such thing. That is why it's important for us to check health-related information from well-established and secure news sources rather than from shared um, stories or SNS or from social medias. That's what I believe. Yeah, right. You have a, a point there, uh, Tracy. And how, what about you, Joanna? What can you say about those people? The message that I want to say for those people who believe in fake news is that they should double check the information first before believing and disseminating it to others. Most especially if you'll be uh, posting it in the social media and in the websites. Because not, not only regarding on the fake medical news, but all of the topics um, regarding fake news because it can hurt uh, people and could also damage a reputation of an individual and of course it could cause um, a problem in the community yeah and i have a follow-up question so what do you think it is uh, the lack of transparency uh, mistrust or lack of correct information now like we are i know we are facing this one the spreading fake news what do you think maybe the lack of of information of the people and not being uh, being careful of what they are disseminating and what they are believing for that's why a person should be uh, should uh, should critically uh, analyze the information first because it can really it can really damage an individual and, and could also damage a community if you're not that aware and you're not that particular of fake news yeah and so far right now na dumadami yung influencer ng Filipinas rights and we're on social medias then some people na kapag fan ka nito uh, syempre influence influencer go go pasok lahat hindi nagiging transparency para sa kanila yung point ng isang tao so what about you uh, Beyonce what can you say about those people Yans, still there? So what can you say again, ha? This is a question. So for you, for you, Abby, uh, what can you say about those people na who are spreading fake news na about the COVID-19 vaccine?
can hear you still hear me so i think beyonce having a technical problem right now so what about you sean uh okay it's a wrong question yeah this is the question again how what can you say about okay. those people like in your community i'm sure you will will hear that um, yes. fake news about the covid 19 vaccine what can you say about those uh i would like to say na lang na dapat maging careful sila again sa mga sinishare nila because madaming maaapektuhan nitong sinishare nila na information mga false information and Again, yun, madaming maa-apektuhan nito kasi di ba hindi lahat sa atin nag-verify ng information. So, marami talagang tao na kung ano yung nababasa nila, yun, believe, uh, kuha na, spread na hanggang sa magkakapas talaga ng malaking problems. Especially ngayong pandemic itong about sa vaccines. Vaccines, uh, madami talaga akong nakikitang mga false information dyan, or hindi pa unverified information. So, delikada talaga yan siya. So, dapat maging aware lang tayo sa ano yung sinishare natin, dapat i-verify natin. And I just want to ask Troy to answer my follow-up question. What do you think, Troy, the, the issues that we've been facing right now, do you think na the society can be rebuilt? Me? Me, Joy? Yeah, rebuild the trust of the okay. trust. Well, for me, Joy, society will rebuild, but it's going to take some time because the damages that COVID-19 has dealt has, many, has made many business go bankrupt and made many schools not being able to provide face-to-face -face services made many people unemployed in fact made other people homeless and made other people not being able to provide for their children and with these damages joy i could say that it will rebuild but it's gonna take some time joy and it's gonna start by developing the vaccines and then we would start by rebuilding our economy, and then rebuild our businesses and go back, apply for new jobs. And eventually everything will go back to normal. Because Joy, I read an article about when is it possibly gonna go back to normal, everything. Everything's gonna go back to normal. And the estimated date that everything's gonna be normal is 2023, which means there's another, another two years before everything's gonna go back to normal i don't know if that's true but i certainly hope that it, it will be much more sooner than that Sigur, it must be okay no that if the filipinos or everyone must be resilient diba? because we cannot def uh, depend on the time on the situation of the presidency the government Siguro mismo indiv as individual we should be resilient yeah for our own sake so thank you guys for sharing your thoughts. And now we have our next question. So, so coronavirus affected people's behavior and life, lifestyle. So how long do you think will affect it will it affect the people socially and eco economically? So what about you, uh, Kara? Yes, Joy, no. Managing the unpredicted obstructions brought by the COVID-19 pandemic has significantly affected the individuals uh, across the world, transitioning their everyday lives from what used to be our way of life to normal distancing and the sort, albeit the social and economic effect of the lockdown in light of the pandemic is setting discrete students like us, families, organizations, etc., injuring at various levels drastically. I think that this effect will do on there is un I think this new normal will be finished not until a vaccine or a new vaccine or a cure will be produced. That's all Joy. Thank you. Yeah. I know that since the beginning of the pandemic the, the world economy has slowed down, right? 
So people live in isolation and practicing social distancing as never before. So at and the death rate from an unprecedented uh, killer in rising rapid, rapidity, right? So tumataas palagi yung ano nga. Thankful nga tayo kasi ngayon double city is a low risk of uh, COVID-19 positive, di ba? So we see and hear the news every day that thousands of people around the world have have, have lost their job as with uh, as have ano Troy said. So or being laid off. Uh, kasi nga, di ba, yung kasinihan sa isang mall, kinuk- uh, kinukuha yung ibang trabahador. Okay? Kasi nga, wala namang sinihan. So, yeah, ililesan nila yung mga trabaho, ni- yung mga trauhan nila. So, leaving many people around the world facing the coming days with a lot of uncertainty regarding the future for them. Di ba? Also, it might be uh, challenging to predict the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, but it has imposed at the moment. So, Still, it will uh, have a lot of hardship on many people around around the globe, around us. So, as a harsh reality of grief, stress, stress and uh, un- employment. So, thank you guys. for I uh, thank you, Kara, by the way. So, next, we have our next question. So, as an individual, how can you enhance your democratic rights in our current situation? And I'm gonna ask uh, Irene. So, as an individual, as a student, or as a member of the community, I guess one of the rights that we can exercise the most is uh, freedom of choice. Because, like, parehas naman sa swab test, uh, especially ngayon na pandemic, in connection with the pandemic, lahat naman pwede mag my option to decline swab tests, to decline vaccines, if ever you are uh, hesitant, hindi naman yung for- force ng government sa'yo. At the same time, can also practice a right to safety, not only like physical safety na sa safety natin sa labas, but also uh, the safety of our health from children to senior citizens. So I guess the best way to do that is to uh, make sure na tayo lahat safe, lalo na kapag uh, when we see someone na wala nagmamas, pwede naman natin sila sabihan na please wear a mask for your and my safety, for the safety of the entire community. At the same time, pag-follow natin ang health protocols. Kasi those are, uh, we should realize that our rights should not only benefit ourselves, but also everyone else in the community. Yeah, thank you for, yeah, I agree for of your thoughts and idea that you said Irene and now we all know that some people ha I don't want to generalize but some people are al- always saying that palpak ang gobyerno gobyerno and since we're in a democratic country uh, do you have ideas Irene how to ensar- enhance our democratic rights for us to acquire our your ideal nation yun um, I guess meron naman talaga yung mga it's okay to, I won't say complain against the government, but to, uh, of course, hindi din natin dapat na hinahayaan lang yung incompetence ng government. Like, kung nakikita natin may mali, we should also speak up about it because that is our freedom of speech. That is our right to to know, uh, especially pagdating naman sa mga uh, government data or public records. So, especially niyang... Uh, yung mga cases, active cases, total cases, it is a right to know that para pwede natin i-evaluate in ourselves na, uy, wow, ang taas na pala ng, uh, oh, ang taas na pala ng cases. And I guess the way to uh, benefit, uh, not benefit, uh, to contribute in the community is to help in reducing those cases by following the health protocols and by using our voice to speak up against kung ano nakikita natin na mali. Yeah, and I hey, thank you for that, by the way, uh, Irene. And someone uh, direct, uh, directed message me, and uh, she is asking for Sean to answer the 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 previous question about the yung the coronavirus impact. So, so let's go back to the ano ha, someone kasi someone kasi ano messaging me. So ano sir, uh, yung last previous yung coronavirus impact the behavior of uh, lifestyle people. So, ito. So, coronavirus affected people's behaviors and lifestyle. So, how long do you think it will affect the people socially and economically? Uh, John? 
Okay, so as the virus spreads, our country plummeted into the abyss of uncertainty. So uh, for me, as long as hindi pa ma-eradicate yung virus or walang mass vaccination na nagaganap, and I don't think na uh, babalik tayo sa normal talaga. So for me, matagal-tagal pa siguro. But I am hoping naman na darating yung day na babalik na tayo sa normal natin na life. And uh, we can, ano naman, as a citizen or citizens in our country, we can help naman sa government by following health protocols such as wearing face masks, uh, observing social, distan uh, social distancing and stuff like that. Yes, thank you, Sean. And so again, uh, thank you for uh, for the answer uh, for the follow up question, Sean. Ha? So next, so we have Sir Brian that oh wait, so he said that it is acceptable to express your dismay to the government, but as we civilians must also assist the government by adhering to protocols, particularly during a pandemic. Yeah, we've been talked this last time, right? Our talk show na. If you're a good citizen, a good J. Marian, you must follow the protocols. The if lumabas lang, if essential yung yung bibilhin, yun, isa na yun sa nakakatulong sa government. And siguro be resilient na lang if kayo ay, because everyone is uh, facing the hardship, right? Then So being numb and means you experience, you fail, you fail, you hurt, or you fall this time, maybe, um, my my motto here is to keep going guys keep going j marian so and to be feel free okay so next we have our next question so guys uh, what life lesson have you learned in this pandemic and let me ask uh, kara Yes, Joy. All through this pandemic, no, I went to the realization that the time has finally come when we ourselves cannot manage our lives the fullest any longer, considering the pandemic and the concern for the future it everyone. And as a graduating J. Morgan student in the senior high school myself, I am worrying over my future with being uncertain of tomorrow as I keep on strolling forward towards the path of independence from the authority of my parents, doubts of my own capabilities revolving around my mind as I reconsider a ton of new things, all thanks to the pandemic. And and now, how about you, Abby? The life lesson that I've learned. I say go. <laughs> Sorry for that, uh, Kara. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. So, are you done with your, I know? You thought about this. So, yo, you can continue. So, yes, Joy. Maybe faith in God. I was able to strengthen my faith in God by continuously believing in Him that this problem just temporary and it'll pass soon. I was able to strengthen my faith by means of praying because I know that at the end of the day, God will will not forsake us and there is always a sunshine after the rain. Wow. <laughs> what a positive <laughs> answer that you share, Abby. <laughs> And how about you, Joanna? What life lesson have you learned in this pandemic? Oh my! Oh, ate, sorry po na technical issue. Yeah, it's okay. Um, actually, my life lessons in pandemic is to appreciate the simple things. Kasi dati parang it is just uh, normal for us to to go to the mall, to go to the park and have a stroll and then meet your friends and all of those kind of things. But now it's it's different. 
and I uh, tend to appreciate those ki- those things more right now because uh, it's just like right now we cannot experience those normally and that's why I learned to be grateful in what I have and what I experience today because we don't know that that simple thing will will disappear later on yeah and how about you carlos i know you've been playing all night right am i right you're a gamer so along the the lockdowns that you've been <laughs> yeah what about you what have you learned about those lessons that we i know now we are permitted to go out so the life lessons that i have learned throughout the pandemic is being grateful for what you have right back when wala pa yung pandemic i was like i was i will always complain why why they why other people have these things while i don't diba parang unfair but during the pandemic i came to realization that sobrang blessed ko din pala hindi man kagaya ng ibang tao pero blessed pa rin because you need to be contented on what you have like now in the pandemic there are many people who can't even eat diba nagarelay lang sila sa relief goods unlike us we can eat three times a day and sometimes meron pang ang araw na may merienda pa diba compare mo sa ibang tao na twice or once lang makakain sa isang araw and by that ano na realize ko na ano mas okay kami and because of this pandemic same as kagaya kay Abi na mas naging malapit din yung ano mas naging malapit din ako kay God and I communicate to him every night wow That's all. what a Thank you, Carlos. And how about you, Tracy? What have you learned ab- about this pandemic now? Well, I would like to just add on on what they said because I ag- I agree with what everyone have said. And the lesson I've learned is like exactly or not exactly the same as them. So during this pandemic, is that I learned that to just be grateful and thank you for the things I have now, even the smallest things. I'm not saying I was never thankful or grateful for what I have had. I'm always grateful for what I have right now, but after realizing and looking back, I took so many things for granted. Made the food, taking the chance to go out freely without thinking if I should wear a mask or not, and etc. And that includes me regretting not doing the things that I could have done when there was no pandemic. So when such thing happens, it gives a new sense of gratitude for the small things in life, like going to school, meeting our friends and hugging them, expressing them and going out to a mall, even outside of the country freely and many more. That's what I think, so. Yeah, I agree. And Dave, uh, Dave commented that everything is, is temporary, so we should learn to cherish, cherish and appreciate things. Yeah, he is right because every moment right like right like right now that we realize that every moment really matters diba right? so we don't know what the future holds us and what the circumstance circumstances that may come so everyone you must cherish everything as if it is your last day because every, you, we all know that you all know that diba right? temporary is temporary lang lahat ng ito like our body everything lahat na lalanta lahat na babago i agree yeah. So what about you, uh, Sean? Uh, akin at the simple lang talaga. So uh, yung narrative ko is life is short talaga, and we should live our life to the fullest. And also we should spend our time sa mga important na mga bagay na pwede natin cherish, just like our family and friends, and not to hang on sa mga worldly stops and temporary stops. Yeah, thank you for your idea, Sean. And someone commented that, uh, shout out to you, Rexa, uh, Rexan, am I right? Ro- Rojas. So, he learned during this pandemic that 
he was really you have to care of each other and you have to coordinate yeah you have right what a nice realization so thank you guys and and mom Mitch Tia also commented we have and she said that we have all changed this year yeah I I also experienced this uh, change as well the emergence of this pandemic has said tested us and profoundly affected our life all around the globe and these uncertainties can push us outside of our comfort zone yes i agree to you ma'am and prevent us from doing our usual but sometimes this is where we go right uh, i agree what have you said ma'am na everyone is facing challenges and lalo na ngayon the changing that we've been uh, facing so always praying always pray for the for the good uh following days to come jay marian and don't forget our god to thank for giving us a good day a good wealth a good health na talaga binibigay niya sa atin pang araw araw so be thankful and grateful to everyone so our, we're done to our small talk shows a uh, small talk rather so up here uh, so applause <laughs> So thank you and now I'm going to give the floor <laughs> to Irene for the to welcome our guest. So hi Irene. Hello Jay Marians. Once again, I am Irene and I am so pleased to be with you today and to have the chance to introduce to you our guest singer, Seda Kasim. Good afternoon, Seda. Hi, good afternoon. So it's a pleasure to have you for our live stream. Thank you for uh, acknowledging our invitation. So can you please tell us something about yourself? So um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is um, Saida Kasim, and I am a grade 12 student in section. section. Um, um, hi, shout out to my advisor and to my friends out there. Um, uh, so yeah. Hi, everyone. J. Marian, hi. So, how are you today? How are you feeling? I'm feeling quite great, yeah. Um, despite the pandemic and all, and um, I'm here at our province right now, and uh, um, it's kind of difficult here, but, yeah. Um, I'm so, uh, as a singer, can you tell me what your inspiration for singing is? Again, uh, can you please tell us what your inspiration for singing is? Um, uh, my inspiration in singing would be uh, my family, uh, my friends, and first and foremost, um, God. Um, since without Him, we would not be here. And like His presence um, has um, a really great impact, not just towards the situation we are in right now, but also to ourselves. So He would be my greatest inspiration in singing along with my friends and my family. Okay, so may we know what song will you be singing for us today? Um... The song that I will be singing to you guys will be um, Captivate Us by Watermark. So to whom are you dedicating this song? I'm dedicating this song to everyone since I know that sa panahon kasi ngayon, we are in a tough situation and um, during this time and day, we should really um, put our faith in God and pray every day and Um, really have um, um, really trust in the hope of our future since um, Captivate Us is um, kind of a song that um, um, goes like attracting God and um, 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 I know yang parang um, attracting God and learning to be by His side and learning to acknowledge His presence, not just in the time of the pandemic, but also every time, every day, we must really acknowledge the presence of God since um, um, 
through his ways and methods, um, everything will go on the right path. Okay. okay, so thank you. Now we can listen to your song, Captivate Me by Water. Uh, Captivate Us by Watermark.
So that wow. was a very beautiful song by uh, Seda Kasim. Thank you for that wonderful song. OMG, thank you, Saida, for singing that song, which dominated my attention. Yeah, this is my first time I heard it, so I think it's a beautiful song, of course, but there's so much more than it's done. So thank you, Saida. So, so someone commented, so Mark Daniel D. Alagasi, uh, he said that very nice. <laughs> very nice, though. And answer uh, Ryan said that Lord draw me closer to your will and Lord bind us with you. And he said thank you, Saida, for the song. And then we have another comment by Mitch T. Koitana. She said that we have all changed this year. The emergence of the pandemic has taxed us and profoundly affected our lives all around the globe. These uncertainties can push us outside of our comfort zones and prevent us from doing our usual, but sometimes it's where we grow. I agree with what Mam have just said. We all have been pushed outside of our comfort zone, but then we have to kind of get used to it and accept it. Yes, thank you very much for the comment. And now we have another comment from Ma'am Edlyn Odasco Baa. Sometimes it's not about the circumstances we have. It's about how we deal with them. Definitely acceptance makes life easier. So it really depends on the person on how you will cope up on that kind of circumstance. That's why we should also we should brace ourselves and develop ourselves to be more strong and stronger and more independent for us to handle those kind of situations thank you ma'am for that comment okay if if no one's gonna take this i'll take this so how can you spot fake news and and what can you do to combat it? Well, first things first, make sure that it comes from a legit website. Or if the author of that page is a person that is well known and is known for posting legit and truthful facts about, about news. And what can you do to combat it? Well, first things first, do not share it. Second, you can write it in the comments because some people to determine whether um, a news is real or not, they tend to look at the comments. And if there are pe certain people who are combating the posts that it is not real, then people would not believe it, or sometimes they would doubt that the post is real. So that's it. Just don't share it. And if you think that is fake news, just comment what you think so it could help awareness to other people who are watching the page. Yeah, and it must be good if, the, if your sources are credible, right? Reliable. Yes, that's the most important part, Joy. Yeah, and how about you uh, next, Carlos? How can you spot fake news and what can you do to combat it? So, spotting fake fake news fake news has been taught us already diba? during grade 11 and even grade 10 they already taught had taught us how to spot if the source is legit or not if there are some dead dead links it might probably be a fake news and next how can you do to combat it so do some research if one 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 source is not enough for example just like in the past where there's a fake fake news spreading where 
Efren Reyes is dead, di ba? Even I believe. As I was scrolling down in the Facebook and I saw. And I can see the link is GMA but it's not it's not the legit link, right? I, I immediately search if I search in GMA news if it's legit and no, Efren Reyes is still alive. So that is how you combat it. Enjoy. Uh, let me add something. Um, there, that's the most common topic in fake news. They tend to tell cer certain celebrities that they are dead, especially Manny Pacquiao, Jinky Pacquiao, or Jackie President Chan. Duterte. Yeah, Jackie Chan. And the reason why they do this, Joy, is because I learned this in GMC that the reason why they do this is for monetary gain. You see, every time they post something that there's fake news, people tend to believe it. It's a good story. So people would try to click the link. And then once they click the link, advertise, advertisements will pop up. So that's how they get, they, they get money from fake news. So people try, tend to find it believable because these fake news makers tend to make it more legit by adding GMA links, uh, like he said earlier. So my message to all students and to all other people who are not students to be more careful on what is posted online and make sure, do not believe it at first, make sure that the source is credible and it's real. Yes. You're right, Troy. And we have our next comment. So we have, and Mom Almira said, Troy, that he is, uh, she is agree. <laughs> yeah, I just, yeah. just saw it. Friend. Thank you, Mom Almira. So from Sir Brian about Alberto to our IBED principal. Hello, sir. So fake news is not beneficial to the society. This is very true because fake news, lalo na kapag, uh, very alarming yung news is naga, of course, naga alarm siya sa community, naga panic ang community agad because the, uh, from what they know, kapag news, kapag article, kapag galing sa Facebook, automatically, totoo siya. So, it's really not beneficial to society and the best way to combat it, parehas nga dun sa question ni Ma Michelle kanina, is to uh, do our research, is to do our research and as well as Make sure naman natin na to use our common sense na is this legit? Does this provide real yes. evidence? And hindi lang yung um, headline ng basahin. And of course, kaya nga, uh, of course, ang Philippines is considered isa sa may lowest reading comprehension. Kasi hindi natin binabasa na maayos. Hindi natin ina-understand yung laman ng content. And there are a lot of clickbait articles out there that we have to uh, recheck twice or we have to research on. And how about this, Karel? What do you think about this uh, comment that commented at jo Ryan? Yes, Joy, no? Fake news is really not special to the society, no? As mo say it, ano, ang fake news ay basura at dapat hindi ito hinahayaan na pakalat-kalat kasi ito ay mabubulok. Yan lang, Joy. Thank you. Yeah, what up? <laughs> and Mr. Rika said that you're on your way to a mark someone meant to a black sign in a market. Oh, he gave a situation now here. So again, I'm going to read it. So you're on, a, on your way to a mark and someone hands you a black sign in a market. What do you put on your sign and why? So how about you, Sean? Mm, maybe uh, laban lang. Uh, just to give ano, motivation sa ano nagbigay na tao sa atin because uh, maybe pala malaki yung ano, problem na pinagdadaanan niya. So hindi natin alam talaga yung story ng isang tao. Eh. So yun lang ilalagay ko. Yeah and for me I want to ad advocate the be proactive avoid the negativity. Yes. Kay yes. negative, negative na nga yung, yung nakukuha natin. Diba? So, feel free yes. to ano. So, what about you, Troy? 
So for me, Joy, the sad uh, blank sign and a marker, I would write change change begins with us. That's that's that that is what I will write in the blank sign because as you er mentioned earlier, Joy, that people tend to blame the government for being for making the country poor and difficult to live in. So for me, Joy, in order for us to make this country better is we need to change ourselves. So my sign would says would tell a message to all of the people out there that we need to change ourselves to become better citizens and stop blaming the government if everything don't, don't go as planned. Because it is not the government's fault that we are poor. It's not the government's fault fault that we are unemployed it's not the government's fault that we are ignorant it is mainly our fault and not the government so joy what i'm trying to say here is joy is start by changing yourself before you judge the government yeah and miss um uh, miss clary logan said that this is why the media information literacy is very important yes ma'am i agree and always know the source of the content before taking it as truth or fact yeah and especially that we are now living in this post truth era so yun tama nga rin po kayo thank you for the comments ma'am and so what have uh so we have our big talk right now. So thank you for the audience that have been uh, supporting us. So thank you po sa mga teachers na sumusuporta sa amin. And, and now guys, are you ready for our big talk? So give me your approved sign if you're ready. So you're ready, Troy. Are you ready, Troy? <laughs> so you're ready. So now I'm going to read this. So how will you motivate the people to keep moving forward despite the struggles that everyone is facing in this trying trying time and let me ask first uh, yes how about you troy despite the struggles well joy for me i would tell the people to um, sorry about the chickens so I live in a farm. <laughs> so in order to motivate people to keep moving forward, despite the struggles that everyone is facing in these trying times is, I would tell the people to take advantage of this situation because COVID made us stay at home and that we are not allowed to go in school or in certain areas. In short, we have no obligations. We have this much free time, and instead of doing nothing, we should use this time to learn new skills, to learn to build new habits, to learn to start a business. What I'm trying to say here is to motivate people, I would tell them to take advantage of this COVID situation and so that they will be able to become better persons when everything goes back to normal. So and to make other people become better is they need to read books exercise or any kinds of activities that can help improve who they are as a person yeah i agree and how about you carlos what can you say about this question um how will you motivate to keep moving forward despite the struggles that everyone is facing facing in these times so what can I say is that just like what Rick San Rojas commented earlier, let's coordinate. Coordination and understanding everyone is everything. It may not be, this pandemic may not be that hard for you, but for others it is, especially the low wages. That's all. Yeah, and how about you, uh, Tracy? Well, to motivate other people, even myself, to keep moving forward despite today's struggles, is that maybe try to accept the situation we're having. I know it's very hard to accept that even though it's been a year, it feels like it went by so fast. But then try to focus on things that 
is it negative? Try to focus on positive things like, like tomorrow I'll be doing this, tomorrow I'll be watching a new anime. Something small, even though it's small, it, something that can help you relieve from something that is making you think negative. And prioritize things that would affect you in a good way. Try to talk with people, even though we're in a con we're stuck at home. Try to talk with people through message messenger or even through a video calls. Talk to your friends. Tell them how you feel. Because sometimes keeping your problem inside within yourself is you know keeping that in will just make yourself you know struggle even more and uh, negativity will just come in and join you and say hi. So try to expand your social life a bit. But not too much. Just accept people who you think will listen to you and that will help you, will guide you, support you. But please do remember when you're telling your problems to someone, telling your struggles to someone, remember that you're not the only one struggling. There are other people who are struggling as well. So there's a limit when you are going to tell your problems. So I think that's it. Also, don't forget to pray to God. He's the number one focus we have here. Remember that we are living right now. We have to be grateful about that. And that's what I think. And how about you, Kara? Can I hear your words about this question? Oh, I agree with... Yeah, yeah, Joy. Yeah, I agree with Troy that this, this situation happening now, we should take it as an uh, opportunity for discovering new things like anything about yourself. Me, I discover, I just discovered recently that um, I'm actually quite good with um, researching for um, papers and that stuff. So you should take this situation, this time now to discover yourself and for yourself, of course so that you can turn this pessimistic event to an optimistic one. It's just a matter of perspective. Let's all join. And what about you? I think. Yeah, Irene. Okay, so I actually agree with Tracy that the very first thing we need to do is accept. Yung acceptance naman talaga um, uh, parang first natin kailangan i-take bago natin, bago tayo magawa ng solutions. But not in a way na sabihin natin, ah, ito lang talaga tayo, ito lang talaga yung, yung uh, situation natin, wala na tayong magagawa. No, but rather accept it in a way na, yes, this is our situation, so what can we do about it? What will we do about it? And I guess, uh, of course, sabi nga ni Tracy is to expand our social um, circle is to talk with other people with our problems because lahat naman talaga tayo may problema and i guess the best way to let go of that is hindi natin ipasa of course yung problema natin sa iba but rather we speak of it para hindi siya uh, parang hindi natin siya kinikimkim because that would only cause for us na parang mag uh, mag build up any negative thoughts which is also bad for our mental health at the same time you should also um realize na yes there are problems uh, ibalance out natin. Yes, there are problems, but yes, there are also good things. And rather than that, uh, rather than focusing on one lang, like poor's good things, because that's toxic positivity, or rather than poor's bad things, because that's just negativity. Ibalance mo na sa bawat problem there is a solution. Sa bawat uh, sa bawat ulan there will always be sunshine. There there will always be uh, a future that we should look uh, forward to. Hindi siya, we are not, we should never be stuck in the past and we should always realize na lahat ng present natin is my, my tomorrow pa tayo. So, you know. Yeah, just keep calm, J. Mario, and everyone out there. And how about this one? Uh, okay, so, i ko lang to answer ko ate. So, as we all know, maraming business ang nag-shutdown due to this pandemic. So, uh, malaki talagang epekto yan and especially sa ating mga small business owners and ating mga farmers din na like sa cattle farm and they, that uh, type of business. So, maybe makamotivate ako by supporting local products kasi 
uh, we don't know na makata I mean like makata help talaga sa if mag support tayo ng mga products nila kasi uh, and also by supporting local products we can motivate them to keep moving forward and maybe we could put a smile on their faces para hindi naman discourage yung mga small business owners and workers. Thank you for that. And how about you, Joanna? So for me, Ate, I'm just going to keep it short. So how do I motivate the people to keep moving forward despite the struggles that everyone is face facing in these trying times? So first, I'm going to remind them that everything is temporary. If you are not okay right now, you eventually it will eventually pass and you will you'll get through that. And uh, I know that that um, we all we have this kind of quote that that everything happens for a reason. And who knows that this pandemic will make us uh, a better version of ourselves. That's why we should be optimistic, just like what Tracy have said. We should be optimistic and just just look at the light of everything, because I know that we will get through all of this. Yes, that is right. And we all know that people right now are striving hard. Everyone, each of each of every one of us is sur is trying striving hard to surpass this poverty and hardships and difficulties that we've been facing. So I just want to say that be empower everyone, be encouraged and please uh, uh give motivations to out there uh, people that 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 are close to you na you sabi sabi nga ni siya na be, always smile and always be inspired people na maging yun lang na to uh, to achieve peace and equality for everyone so that's all and to wrap up this guys thank you everyone for supporting our live so again we'll be having our next talk show next week so bye guys thank you everyone say bye bye thank you everyone bye Jay Maria bye 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 Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.